Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar. My name is Roya Etminani Ghasradashti. I'm working as postdoctoral researcher in Center for Transportation Equity Decisions and Dollars at the University of Texas at Arlington. This webinar is exploring the role of transportation in cancer patients' decision making while using machine learning techniques. This project has been developed through a multidisciplinary collaboration. Dr. Chenkan from Industrial Engineering Department collaborated with us in this project as co-investigator. Ladan Muzaffarian and Mohamed Arif Gaysarni, uh, our research assistants, collaborated in this project from uh, College of Architecture, Planning and Public Affairs, and also Omer Mogulti from Department of Mathematics collaborated in this project. The main aim of the study is exploring the role of transportation burdens and barriers in cancer patients' decision making and also their quality of life. We conducted a survey, a patient cancer patient survey across the US in 20, 2019 to collect data and also we collected data uh, through ge geographic information system about patient cancer patients, uh, residential neighborhood and their health care providers. We used different statistical methods, including structural equation models and also machine learning models. We will discuss about the final results and outputs of the study through the, this presentation. First, we will introduce the research and the mention to the importance and necessity of the research in this field, the review of literature. We discuss uh, the survey design and data collection. In the first step of exploring, we explore effects from travel distance and cancer outcomes. In the second step, we explored how transportation burdens influence on cancer patient decision making. Finally, we examined the impacts of built environment along with other controlling variables on quality of life of cancer patients. In the final section, we conclude the uh, uh, results and findings and also provide some policy implementations and recommendations for future study. And the research background, we mentioned to the importance of studies in terms of cancer, transportation, and decision making. Cancer is a chronic illness. In many cases, it will not disappear entirely and therefore affect patients' whole life. Since cancer is not a contagious disease, patients may decide about uh, the adoption or not adoption of the treatment, the type of treatment, continuing or stopping it. Several factors uh, affect patients' decision making, including their sociodemographic attributes, such as their age, their level of income, race, ethnicity, or their insurance status. The treatment burdens, such as the side effects that they have during the treatments, and also the transportation barriers. Accordingly, more prospective studies are required to identify the potential role of travel barriers to cancer patients. Also, cancer patients are struggling with different and several burdens from their diagnosis step to treatment and beyond. And because of that, significant portion of cancer patients experience a poor quality of life. Although evidence reveals that built environment characteristics promote the physical activity, uh, physical well-being, social interaction in the communities and mental health, the impact of residential neighborhoods on quality of life in cancer patients is well recognized. Accordingly, we designed main research questions based on uh, the importance of this study uh, in three main areas, how transportation affect cancer patients' outcomes, their in improved outcomes or not, how the transportation barriers influence cancer patients' decision making in terms of continuing or stopping a treatment, and how built environment and attributes along with uh, travel components influence on cancer patients' quality of life. In the literature review, we focused on three main uh, fields of the study, the transportation, accessibility, and cancer outcomes, transportation, cancer, and decision-making, cancer, and quality of life. Long distances uh, to healthcare providers can impose burdens on cancer patients in various aspects including physical, social, practical, and psychological. Patients who must travel long distances to receive treatment often experience more severe treatment-related side effects. 
Factors such as travel distance, lack of access to a private vehicle or to other options, such as public transport, trip frequency, trip length to healthcare providers, are the most crucial treatment related factors that impose barriers on cancer patients. Moreover, uh, centralization of healthcare facilities can influence on cancer outcomes, travel distance resulting from regionalization of complex cancer surgeries can impose substantial burden and barriers on those patients that are at risk of mortality. The patients who reside in further distances from cancer specialists have longer diagnostic intervals and are less likely to use cancer treatment. Accessibility to travel modes and cancer outcome can influence on cancer outcomes. Again, lack of accessibility to public transit, may impose transportation barriers, particularly for vulnerable groups such as those with special ethnicity, women, low-income cancer patients, or other kinds of pa cancer patients. Transportation uh, can affect on uh, cancer patients in two principal factors. One of them is treatment-related factors such as uh, patients' uncertainty about the effectiveness of treatment, possible outcomes, and the side effects of the treatment. And second, patient-related factors such as cost of treatment, access to treatment, and impact on the quality of life during the treatment. So in the second field of uh, study, we influence how different factors influence on cancer patients' decision-making by um, emphasizing on the role of transportation. In terms of quality of life in cancer patients, we focus on built environment attributes how, and how different characteristics of a residential built environment along with the travel components influence on self-reported uh, uh, quality of life in cancer patients. Survey design and data collection. To define the survey cohort, we focused on patients who, had, who were eligible through screen questions. Accordingly, the respondents should meet the following three defining factors. They must be we selected our cohort, our uh, sample among those patients who diagnosed with cancer. Second, those who treated by radiotherapy, chemotherapy, or other treatments. And third, they must be currently in remission or still seeking other treatments after they had one treatment. So these questions worked for us as uh, screening questions. In terms of survey design, the survey incorporates five separate sections in which a variety of aspects related to patients and disease has been questioned. The main five sections of a survey included initial diagnosis. In initial diagnosis, the survey includes some questions about the stage of cancer, grade of cancer, primary site of tumor, age of diagnosis. In the second uh, section of the survey, we focused on treatment and transportation. Treatment options including chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and other types of cancer treatments and transportation options divided into separate sections for each of these treatment times in terms of trip frequency, trip mode, trip length to different uh, types of treatments including chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or other treatments. Special uh, attributes were asked in the questionnaire survey and then uh, Joe coded through the to, through special analysis. Sociodemographics were another part of the survey about um, different attributes of um, cancer patients. And also the quality of life was a section in the survey that uh, asked through self-reported uh, quality of life questions. In terms of uh, accessing to the home addresses, we didn't have the permission to ask about the uh, home address of cancer patients, so we focused on the closest gas station to cancer patients uh, uh, in the survey, and we asked them about the, what is your uh, closest gas station. Uh, we asked them about the nearest intersection from their gas station to their home. And we ask about the zip code, the city of zip code, and we geocoded the gas stations. And we uh, hypothesized that this gas station is in a one mile buffer area from their home. So we extracted about 589 home addresses through this method. 
This map is indicating the special distribution of our sample in terms of two types of treatments, the chemotropy treatments and the radiotropy treatments. In order to obtain the built environment attributes and explore the effects from built environment attributes on uh, cancer and transportation of cancer patients, we extracted the view variables. These view variables included density, such as population density and employment density, diversity in terms of diversity of land use, design in terms of a street network design, such as intersection density, and also distance to transit. We also asked in, the, in our survey, ask our uh, participants to mm, tell us about their uh, healthcare providers. We asked them about the name of healthcare providers and the exact address of their healthcare providers. We geocoded the address of healthcare providers for two types of treatments, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. By geocoding the healthcare addresses, uh, we were able to uh, up obtain and calculate the OD matrix and calculate the travel distance from their home address to their exactly uh, to their um, healthcare providers. In the first step of our analysis, we focused on travel distance and cancer outcomes. So we extended our research questions in order to investigating the effects of distance on cancer outcomes. We uh, examined the mediator role of travel distance to healthcare providers and also the trip frequency and improved cancer outcomes. We investigated the independent role of built environment and socioeconomic attributes on cancer outcomes. And in order to explore the effects of travel distance on cancer outcomes, the two more three years were considered as the outcome of the cancer for both radiotropy and chemotropy patients. The key factors in this section considered as cancer outcomes, the two more three years, travel distance to healthcare providers that we have calculated before, the built environment measures in terms of diversity, density, distance to transit, and uh, network, uh, the design of network, the controlling variables, including trip frequencies to healthcare providers and social demographic attributes of cancer patients. In this step of analysis, we had 143 patients that had radiotherapy and 130 patients that had chemotherapy treatments. In order to, influence, to ex explore the influences of travel distance and trip frequency and improved cancer outcomes while considering the role of built environment and social demographic attributes of cancer patients, we decided to conduct a structural equation models. A structural equation models is a common model in transportation studies that have the ability of simultaneously explore the direct and indirect associations between different variables. Considering the two more three years as an our output as an indigenous variables, give us the ability to uh, to explore the impact of all exogenous variables, including travel distance, trip frequency, built environment, and social demographics on two more three years in cancer patients. This picture is uh, showing the final path diagram of two more three years for radiotherapy, as we can see in this picture. We considered uh, travel time as a mediator, travel time to healthcare providers for radiotropy as a mediator that influence on travel frequency and also influence on the cancer outcomes in terms of two more three years. We also considered the built environment, the residential built environment of the cancer patients as exogenous variables. And also we considered the social three measures of socioeconomic attributes, including gender, race, and age at diagnosis of the other cancers, key variables that influence on cancer outcomes as two more three years. The PET coefficient estimate estimates for effects between key variables for radiotherapy, and we found that there are multiple significant interrelations between our exogenous and indigenous variables. We did the same analysis for people who had chemotropy treatments and we explore how different factors influencing the residential built environment, the travel distance that they travel 
to get uh, their to get to their chemotherapy treatment influence on their uh, tumor for years. So the most important findings from this step of the study shows that travel distance to cancer facilities cannot consistently predict the receipt of treatment in an expected way because the literature emphasizes on the fact that uh, people or patients, cancer patients who travel long distances to get to their treatments have lower cancer outcomes and outputs. But participants who decided to travel longer distances to radiotherapy treatment centers in our study have more tumor-free years. So it in, in indicates that they had improved cancer outcomes. Accordingly, we can um, conclude that traveling the farther distance to health providers have the ability to increase the opportunity of accessing to higher volume hospitals with advanced treatment quality and outweigh the potential and negative disadvantages of longer travel distances. We also found a positive effect from distance to transit and actual travel distance to cancer care providers for radiotherapy treatment. Our results show that patients who living in neighborhoods with less access to large hospitals are more likely to choose radiotropy centers with farther distance as well. And also the effects from socio-demographic attributes on tumor-free years or cancer improvement outcomes show that females and white Americans are more likely to travel longer distances and so travel longer distances causes um, improved cancer outcomes. The second phase of our analysis, we focused on transportation barriers and cancer patients' decision making. In this field, we focused on uh, research questions. We tried to understand how patients' travel behavior affect their decision making in order to continue or discontinue their treatments. We investigated the mediating role of personal related and treatment related variables as the significant determinants of cancer patients' decision making. We used and employed machine learning methods, including logistic regression, random forest, support vector machine, and artificial neural network to analyze the nonlinear patterns underlying the predictor variables with respect to cancer patients' decision making. So in this uh, step of the study, we focused on 335 of our cancer patients who had radiotherapy and 347 cancer patients who had chemotherapy treatments. We focused on uh, particular factors in this case, the travel burdens, lack of access to transportation. We asked our respondents uh, for statements about how often they miss their appointments during treatments due to the lack of access to four modes of transportation, including private car, public transit, app-based mobility, and free transportation. The responses were provided based on Likert scale from less than once per month to two or more times per week. So lack of accessibility to transportation has been uh, considered as missing an appointment because of not having access to uh, different modes of transportation. In terms of travel behavior, we focused on trip frequency, trip length, and trip mode. The survey concluded some questions, uh, included some questions about how often the patients make a trip to their healthcare providers. So it shows the trip frequency to healthcare providers for chemotherapy and radiotherapy separately. We ask about the trip length and trip mode of the, uh, their healthcare providers' travel behavior. In terms of treatment burdens, uh, we asked uh, some questions about the difficulties that patients face during radiotherapy and chemotherapy by four statements. We asked them how often they need painkillers to do their day-to-day -day activities, how they have difficulties in paying treatment costs, how uh, the treatment affects uh, on their ability to work or it affects on treatment on ability to drive. We factor analyze these statements and extracted um, radiotropy and chemotropy burdens for each treatment and each patient separately. We also considered insurance coverage and treatment average cost as treatment burdens. In terms of treatment characteristics, the duration of their treatments were considered. 
we had other factors such as cancer diagnosis, the difficulty of the cancer diagnosis based on the type of their cancer. We consider the social demographics in terms of their gender, race, and age of diagnosis. And finally, the patient's decision making considered as whether they stopped or continued their treatments, the chemotherapy or radiotherapy, uh, after a while that it, they started that treatment. The conceptual model of the study developed based on two types of uh, factors, the personal related factors and the treatment related factors. The treatment related factors were somehow uh, similar in between different cancer patients. The cancer diagnosis, the difficulty of diagnosing a cancer, the treatment characteristics and also the treatment side effects. But the personal related factors was different between different patient cancers in terms of their socioeconomic attributes, their travel behavior, travel burdens and treatment burdens. So these two types of factors influence on patients decision making in order to continue or discontinue their treatments, the chemotherapy treatment or the radiotherapy treatment. Machine learning models was employed, were employed for surveying data analysis. We implemented four machine learning models in this stage, logistic regression, random forest, artificial neural network, and support vector machine. The logistic regression model estimated the probability of stopping the treatment for radiotropy or chemotropy. The random forest implemented to classify the multiple trees in random forest. The artificial neural network maps then put feature vector to a class label through multiple layers of neurons and the support vector machine was implemented in this study to explore the connection between factors and decision making in order to continue or discontinue the treatment. So the descriptive statistics of the uh, factors showed that the majority of our respondents were females with, and the majority of them were white Americans. When we compare the travel frequency to treatment providers for chemotherapy and for radiotherapy, we found that in radiotherapy, about 38% of uh, our patients traveled more than two weeks a week for their uh, treatment. But in chemotherapy, only 15% of the percent have, patients had two or more times per week travel to their healthcare providers. It's because radiotherapy is usually given over many weeks and sometimes will be given twice a day for several weeks, but chemotherapy treatment schedules may be dif is different uh, from radiotherapy. We explored the travel mode to treatment providers and, and we found that in terms of trip modes in both treatments, cancer, chemotherapy and radiotherapy, patients are really interested to use their private car alone or with others to get to their health care providers for radiotropy and chemotropy. And the people who use other modes of transportation, such as um, on-demand ride services, taxis, or even public transit, such as bus and ra rail, where the, the amount of those people and those patients were very smaller comparing to those who use their private car. So people, the pay cancer patients, were more likely to use their private car to get to their health care providers. And also, finally, we um, compared the cancer patient's decision making for chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And we found that 11%, about 12% of um, cancer patients who had radiotherapy stopped their treatment. And about 16% of the chemotherapy pa cancer patients stopped their treatments. So we uh, employed machine learning methods to analyze and explore how different factors contribute in stopping the treatments. We used accuracy F-score and recall for each machine learning model uh, in for radiotherapy and chemotherapy to check the accuracy of our models for both uh, type of treatments. This figure, this diagram is showing the uh, features that are important and predicting the cancer, a cancer patient's decision making to stop or continue their treatments. As we can see in this uh, diagram, uh, one of the most important features uh, are number four, and it's lack of accessibility to transportation that we explore that this lack of access to transportation were explored through 
uh, missing appointments during uh, the chemotherapy or radiotherapy due to the lack of access to different transportation modes. So this factor, lack of access to transportation, uh, was one of the most important features in random forests that contrib contribute in decision making towards radiotropy. And also among other trouble behavior factors, we found that trip frequency and trip length make important contributions to the prediction of patients' decision making. Other factors such as treatment frequency, radiotropy burdens, cancer diagnosis, treatment average cost, treatment duration, trip mode and gender, where the, the other features that were important when uh, uh, considering the role of these features on stopping a treatment. Results from random forest for chemotherapy was uh, the same, it, uh, although one of the most important features for chemotherapy treatment was number one, that is age as diagnosis, and also number five, that is treatment burdens. But when we check the uh, diagram, we can see that the lack of access to transportation is still is very important uh, and plays a crucial role in order to stop uh, chemotherapy treatment for patients who had chemotherapy. So we uh, ran uh, the logistic regression model to uh, verify our findings and results from random forest, and again we uh, consider that lack of access to transportation is associated with stopping both radiotropy and chemotropy treatments. Treat mode has a significant relationship with the stopping radiotropy. As we can see, this trip mode is considered as uh, uh, car mode uh, versus non-car modes because the percentage of people who used car to get to their treatments for both chemotropy and radiotropy was very long. We consider trip mode as a binary variable that one is for people who are using car and zero is for people who using other options of transportation. So trip mode is where it has a significant relationship with the stopping radio treatments. It means that people who use their cars were less likely to stop their treatments. Treatment burdens and difficulty of cancer diagnosis positively and age of respondents negatively influence on the stopping radiotropy. We also ran another uh, logistic regression model for those patients who had chemotropy treatments, and the uh, uh, results were the same. The lack of access to transportation was associated with stopping chemotropy treatments. Other factors were treatment burdens, insurance coverage, chemotropy, average cost, cancer diagnosis, and gender were other non-transportation factors that influence on a stopping treatment. So the most important results and findings in this step of our analysis emphasize on the fact that poor access to transportation, which suggested to play a crucial role in missing appointments in previous research, seems to have a significant impact on cancer patients' decision making and stopping their treatments. The negative association between trip mode, especially using car, and the stopping radiotropy indicates that poor access to private vehicles can result in missing cancer treatments. Results also suggest that other components of travel behavior, including trip length and trip frequency to radiotropy and chemotropy providers significantly influence on cancer patients' decision making. Trip length and trip frequency to healthcare providers had a greater contribution in following or quitting chemotropy treatments when comparing to radiotropy treatments. The third phase of our analysis, we focused on examining the impacts of built environment on quality of life in cancer patients. Accordingly, we designed our questions in order to understand how built environment attributes such as density, design, diversity of residential neighborhood count for the level of quality of life in, of the cancer patients. We explore the effects of built environment attributes by considering both objective and subjective uh, built environment attributes. We employed the socio-demographic attributes and heart-related variables reviewed and suggested in the literature as a significant determinants of cancer patients' quality of life as well. So in this stage of the study, we focused on 589 cases of our sample and we built our 
a methodology based on four types of factors, the built environment measures, the residential built environment that we previously extra geocoded and extracted through the home addresses of cancer patients in terms of density, land use, diversity, street design, and distance to transit. We focused on perceived built environment as a subjective measurement uh, in order to um, accessibility to different events from their patients' uh, home address. We ask about, uh, we ask patients in the survey how easy they can access to different areas such as uh, healthcare providers, drug stores, work, school, destinations, families, and we ask about the affordability of their neighborhood, the quietness, the safety and security. So we extracted perceived built environment by uh, performing some factor analysis. The quality of life in this study was a self-reported quality of life we ask about the overall quality of life of cancer patients. And also we considered other factors such as socioeconomic attributes, age, gender, income, race, education, employment and status, and also some questions about uh, the coverage of their insurance. In this phase of the study, we employed four machine learning models, including logistic regression, decision tree, random forest, and multi-layer multi neural network. For the, in the logistic regression, the logouts for the label was calculated. In the decision tree model, uh, we deployed a tree-like structure to learn the simple decisions rules that inferred from the data. And also an extension of the decision tree classifiers was the random forest and consists of a large number of each decision trees that operates as an ensemble. The MLP feature vector in the input layer to the class labels in the output layer to hidden layers. So after analyzing and running the models, we uh, compared different algorithms and this uh, table is based on the random forest outputs. According to the random forest uh, features, uh, the most important features that contribute on in uh, quality of life of the cancer uh, patients are uh, travel distance to closest large hospital, the perceived accessibility of the residential neighborhood, distance from home to transit, and the population density. These factors were the most significant features that contribute to the level of quality of life in cancer patients for radiotherapy and for chemotherapy. We also run another model for the logistic regression model to uh, compare the results from logistic regression and random forest and other algorithms. And we found that a higher level of quality of life is reported by the patients in neighborhoods with lower population density. Other factors such as uh, socioeconomic attributes, the education, the health insurance, and the age of the cancer patients were in significantly influenced on their level of quality of life. And in terms of health related variables, the cancer treatments, the chemotherapy, people who had chemotherapy showed uh, lower levels of quality of life comparing with the people who had uh, radiotherapy treatments. It's because the uh, chemotherapy uh, may cause a different side effects in cancer patients and the side effects in, uh, are more when comparing with the radiotherapy treatments. So the most important findings from this uh, step of the study was that the adverse effect of population density on the self-reported quality of life in cancer patients can be uh, explained by the negative emotions towards negative aspects of the density, such as traffic congestion, sense of crime, and lack of green space. Also, we found that perceived accessibility influence on self-reported quality of life. Uh, patients residing with less accessibility to different errands reported lower level of QOL. Mixed land use has the potential to provide better quality of life through offering longer, healthier, and safer lives and contribute to the common well-being and health of the cities. In the final step, we concluded uh, our results and recommended some policy implementations and uh, for the future studies. 
One of the most important findings of the study was although travel distance reduces the accessibility of patients to care services, our findings suggest that participants who decide to travel longer distances to get to their radiotherapy centers had greater tumor free years due to the access to higher quality health care. Accordingly, strengthening and reinforcing strategies to refer cancer patients to high quality hospitals uh, it's really important for treatment efficiency because we saw that people who traveled longer distances to get to radiotropy centers had better uh, cancer outcomes. And also decreasing transportation burdens by providing access to healthcare facilities, reducing referral patterns that can contribute to disparities in access to high quality cancer care by different income groups, ethnicity and races are other recommendations of this, this study. In terms of transportation accessibility and cancer outcomes, another findings show that um, residents of rural and distant areas are more dependent to their private transportation and accustomed to traveling long distances to get to healthcare pro providers. So they are more probable to travel long distances to follow cancer treatments. But urban residents have more transportation options. They are more uh, dependent on public transportation and are more likely to decide not traveling far distances if they experience travel as a burden. So the recommendations in this part is to improve the level of access to health facilities. Policies and strategies should be tailored to different geographical regions based on rural settings and urban settings. Expanding the supportive transportation programs, such as road to recovery programs, is one of the recommendations of the study, and also providing free rides to patients with lack of access to private vehicles can help them in order to have greater cancer outcomes. In terms of transportation accessibility and cancer decision making, continuing or stopping treatments, we found that the majority of our participants use the private vehicle whether alone or uh, with others as their principal mode to access to treatment facilities. Accordingly, future interventions should regard more available, convenient and affordable car trips because they are more convenient in car trips through supporting ride sharing programs in addition to public transit discounts and medical transportation services. We also found that the lack of access to transportation is the most significant factor that affects cancer patients continuing or stopping their treatments. Accordingly, correlation between health policymakers, urban planners, and transportation experts to conduct more research regarding the effect of transportation policies on health outcomes is really needed. In terms of cancer and quality of life, our findings show that living environment and mobility related factors such as travel distance to the closest large hospital perceived accessibility, distance to transit and population density are among the most significant predictors of the cancer patient's self-reported quality of life. Accordingly, integrating transportation planning with public health and social studies to improve the existing policies and strategies on transportation accessibility and equity can increase the well-being and quality of life of cancer patients. Also, there is an inherent need to develop a quality of life measurement that comprehensively count for subjective feelings as well as objective factors, especially in terms of patients' health condition, transportation, and built environment for those patients who are struggling with cancer or chronic disease. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions, I would be glad to answer your questions.